Hey everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here again. Thanks for stopping by the channel where we get to test and unbox the latest electrically wheeled gadgets. It's that time of day again. It is unboxing time. This is the Varla Eagle One electric scooter. It goes up to 40 miles per hour. It's got a 52 volt, 18 amp hour battery. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's roll the intro and unbox this Varla Eagle One. All right, here it is, the Varla Eagle One electric scooter. As far as I know, this is basically just the Zero 10X replica. So let's open it up and see if that's true. The Zero 10X was basically the premier scooter of 2019. It was the first real scooter that came out with dual suspension, targeted regular retail consumers, and just went stupid fast. This thing goes up to 40 miles per hour. It's got dual 1000 watt motors a 1000 watt motor in each wheel. All right, so here's the inside. I don't know how much you can see, so I'll show you. Let's see, we got the charger brick. This is just a piece of the charger that the plug plugs into. We've got wheel lug nut covers here. These just pop over the end of the lug nuts on each wheel. Way down in this little hole, you need T-Rex fingers to get in there. Multi-tool. One piece holding in the stem bar here. Oh, no way, they gave me a custom deck, sweet. Maybe it's not custom, but it looks cool. I'll have to show you guys in a second here. Another piece of foam off the top here, and foam. These are in stock right now for what it's worth at Varla store. I think they're $16.99. There's a $100 off coupon right now for Black Friday. So it actually matches the price at RevRides with the Zero 10X, because they're on sale for $15.99 there. Honestly, I think I would buy from RevRides because they have exceptional customer service and it's the same exact scooter, but let's see what Varla can do. Scooter weighs about 80 pounds though for what it's worth. Ooh, they threw a spare inner tube in there for me because the scooter does not have solid tires like the Pegasus back there. <laughs> so in the bottom of the box, I found a valve stem cover for my tire and just a random screw. <laughs> I hope I don't need that. That's a spare valve stem cover for the inner tube. There you go. All right, so we have the Eagle One out of the box. Let's go ahead and fold this collar piece down so we can keep the bars in the upright and locked position. If you get the Varla Eagle One, they have different choices for grip tapes. I thought that the grip tape on here was custom. It kind of is. I've never seen a skull and crossbones on a scooter before. But they also give you this cool urban graffiti type one. This rather uh, controversial American flag one. And then this cool like army American type deal. I think I'll go ahead and put this one on later on. I kind of like the way that looks. So you can see here we've got exposed lug nuts. I'm gonna take a second and put our lug nut covers on that did come with the scooter. These ones actually slide on pretty nicely, but I still recommend putting a little teeny dab of super glue on here. Huh, these say OXO on them. I wonder if they're from an Inokin. Okay, so here's our latch. It's just a standard collar latch. So there's a little metal collar that slides down. And you slide it all the way down, and then you tighten down these little, um, I don't know what you want to call these, cincher arms. And it's just this process of going back and forth and slowly tightening them both down one by one by one until they're both fairly tight. If, for whatever reason, this isn't tight enough for you and the bars still wiggle, it's probably gonna happen with me, happens with bigger riders, and just once it gets a little bit worn out. They make a thing called a rugged clamp, and it's basically just one of these on crack. It's a huge stem uh, collar that slides around. I think it's got like three latches or something, but it's much more rugged than this. It's about a hundred bucks though, so. It's a folding mechanism, it works, but not the greatest. Let's go ahead and figure out how to put these on. Looks pretty standard. We just got four screws in the top right here, so let's go ahead and take those out. We'll take this little front face plate off, put the bars in and then put the face plate back on. I picked up one of these little handheld skill screwdrivers. It's electric, so I don't have to do this by hand anymore. And I had a lot of people giving me flack about using a drill, even though the clutch was set to zero. But this is a cool little tool also. Okay, so our little front face plate is off the top there. You just take the four screws out and it comes off. Set that right there. And then we take our bars and we set them in the groove here. You want your throttle to be on the right hand side and you obviously want the brakes in the front. And you get your front face plate with your four screws and you put the front face plate back on with the four screws. Make sure you drop things and make it really inconvenient for yourself to do. 
Okay, so I've got the faceplate screwed on, my handlebars are secure. Now all I've got to do is go through and find the screws for all these different handlebar components and tighten them all down where I want them. You can see we've got a bell here, we've got the Eco Turbo single dual switch, we've got our brake lever, and then on this other side we have an ignition switch and a voltage readout, which means I should have had keys in the box, so I need to go look through the box again and find my keys. Which means I should have had which keys in the I box. Which means I should have had keys in the box, so I need to go look through the box again and find my keys. There's also this uh, QS S4 throttle display here, as well as your second brake lever down on the bottom. So there isn't a whole lot else I can do with the scooter except maybe show you how springy the suspension is. I guess I can bounce on it for you. It's very springy. It reminds me a lot of the V-Set. And one of the downsides of this suspension is that if you jump really hard and you're a bigger guy and you really compress the springs, they won't recoil back to their original size. So they'll be a little smaller than they were. And then the wheel will have a little bit of give up and down in the front or the back. So. Um, if you do get the scooter and you're a bigger guy, I recommend upgrading the suspension. That's about one thing I can show you. Other than that, I can just pump up the tires and charge it. Charging time on this thing, let's see what the charger is. It's an 18 amp hour battery and we have got a 1.7 amp charger. So 18 divided by 1.7 is going to give you how many hours this thing takes to charge. It's got dual charging ports, as you can see. So I'll put on the screen now what Varla's resolution to the no keys problem was. They replied within a couple hours and they sent me a screenshot of exactly where the keys were. But I appreciate you guys staying tuned for the video and watching me unbox this thing. Now you know what comes in the box and what doesn't come in some of the boxes. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll get some keys, charge this thing up, and then give it its maiden voyage and test it against the VSET 10 Plus. Well, well, look at what I found. Boom. This is like two hours later. I had just finished cleaning up, was about to tidy, take a shower and go to bed, and I just saw the keys dangling right here. I somehow missed them even though I put all this together and tightened everything up. I still didn't see them. I went through and tightened every screw on the scooter. My two brakes scraped, so I fixed those. The actual rotors themselves were bent, so I had to go through with the screwdriver and actually like bend this rotor so that it wasn't warped anymore. Good to go there. And I pumped the tires up to 45 PSI. As you can see, we're charging now with a stock charger. When this light turns green, it means my scooter's fully charged. And then you'll see me next time we can take this thing out on the street and give it a whirl.